Hi kids and welcome to May's edition of the storytelling sessions by the Jane Goodall Institute here in Singapore. As usual, I am your host, I'm Safari Sid, and I'm delighted to be taking you through this month's session because it's a really special one. Can you see what's going on behind me? So we are here at the Botanic Gardens in Singapore for the Festival of Biodiversity and that's happening right now here in Singapore celebrating it with some of our many other NGOs and charities out here. Jane, the Jane Goodall Institute is here and we are celebrating biodiversity. So please do look out on our social media for all the posts and all the new things that we've done uh, around the festival. Now kids, you know as usual we have a very exciting session lined up for you. We've got three incredible stories that you're going to enjoy. But before we get into the stories, as usual, do any of you remember who Dr. Jane Goodall is? Is there anyone out there that remembers who she is? Well, for those of you who don't remember, and for those of you who are new, Dr. Jane Goodall is an incredible lady that has inspired all of us around the world to band together and help in conservation. And it's not just the chimpanzees that she researched for years and years all the way out at Gombe Stream National Park. It's actually many other primates and all the other animals out there. And right here today, we're, as, as a celebration of the Festival of Biodiversity, we are celebrating the conservation of many, many other animals, not just chimpanzees and primates. So, being inspired by Dr. Jane and her ability to tell such wonderful stories, this is us here today going to tell you an amazing story. Now the first one is by the students of SOTA here in Singapore. They've done an incredible story about otters and it's called You Otter Know Better. Hi everyone, we are from SOTA and we are collaborating with JGIS. I am Alexis. I am Fei Yao. I am Elizabeth. I am Trini. And I am Chloe. Recently, there have been a lot of otters spotted around Singapore. So we decided to write this story called You Otter Know Better, which is the story of a boy, an otter, and the consequences of his actions when he tries to bully an otter. We hope, hope you enjoy. enjoy. Here are our characters. This is Bob, a naughty boy who likes to destroy other animals' home. And this is our cute little otter friend, Ollie. Ollie lives in Bishan Park. It is a hot day, and Bob wants to play at Bishan Park. He comes across an otter home called a hole. Just then, Ollie the otter comes out from his hole. Bob goes closer to the hole and thinks to himself, it would be kind of funny if I destroyed it. Ollie the otter comes out of his hole and sees that it has been destroyed. Angry, Ollie looks at Bob and says, why do you destroy my home? Now I have nowhere to live. Bob replies, No one cares. Just make another one. Ollie cries, I spent days and nights trying to build my home, and now you have destroyed it. Bob just shrugs and laughs. <laughs> it's not that hard. Just call your other author friends to help you rebuild it. Ollie sighs and says, Because of humans, all my other author friends have left. Bob laughs and says, <laughs> It's not my problem. He walks off, leaving Ollie crying. Bob gets home and feels really bored. He decides to play with some Legos. Just then, his brother walks in, and Bob exclaims proudly to his brother, Look what I just made. I used my Legos to build a nice house. However, his brother just laughs. Haha, <laughs> this is horrible. And destroys his Lego house. Bob is really sad and looks at his brother and asks him, Why do you destroy my Lego house? I spent so long building on it. However, his brother just says, It's not my problem, just make a new one. At this moment, Bob realizes what he had said to Ollie earlier that day. He comes back to the park to see Ollie trying to rebuild his home. Bob walks forward and apologizes to Ollie. I'm so sorry. 
I now know how it feels like to have your things destroyed. Here, let me help you. Together, Ollie and Bob help rebuild the hole. And we have come to the end of our story. The moral is to not disturb wild animals as they may as we may put them in danger, like what Bob did to Ollie. Thank you. Wasn't that a great story, kids? Did you enjoy it? Can we do a round of applause to all the wonderful students of SOTA that put this amazing story about the otters for us together? Now kids, we're here in the Botanical Gardens of Singapore and you know there's lots of otters around here. Have you seen any otters? You might see them in the Singapore River, you might see them out here in the Botanical Gardens, you may even see them in some of the other areas like Bedok Reservoir or McRitchie Reservoir. We have so many otters out here, but did you know, kids, that not that long ago, there were almost no otters left? But thanks to some of the amazing work done by conservationists, we've been able to bring them back, and they're now one of our most friendliest wild creatures here in Singapore. Do you kids remember any other wild creatures here in Singapore? Maybe some of the primates? You know, we've got lots of monkeys here. We have three different species of monkeys here in Singapore. It's the Raffles Banded Langer, the Long Tail Macaque, and the Sunda Slow Norris. I wonder if you've seen any of them. Talking of wild animals, we have another story coming up. And the next story is a wonderful animation put together by the students of La Salle College of the Arts. It's a lovely story about the songbirds. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Catherine from La Salle Animation. Our video, The Last Song, is a collaboration with Jane Goodall Institute of Singapore. It follows the journey of an oriental white eye that is captured from the wild and been taken to a bird song competition and they treat him very cruelly. Through this video, we hope to raise awareness on the harms of the illegal bird trade. TGIS has given us knowledge to fight illegal wildlife trade and we hope that you guys will join us too so we can stop this cruelty at once. Thank you. Have a nice day. Next up on stage, we have the Oriental White Eye. Among the 14,000 birds found in the market, 46% were oriental white eyes. They were once native to Singapore, but were eradicated through trapping for the illegal bird trade and bird song competitions, as well as loss of habitat. Illegal possession and capturing of wild songbirds is punishable by high fines and imprisonment. If you see any suspicious poaching activities in Singapore, 
Report to National Parks at 1-800-476-1600 or Acres at 9783-7782 or report any suspected illegal wildlife trade activities via the Wildlife Witness app. Together, we can stop illegal wildlife trade. Wow, wasn't that a great animation, kids? Did you like the cartoon? Can we please give a round of applause to the incredible students of LaSalle College of the Arts? We really enjoyed that, the last song, and I hope you learned something about it. Now, kids, remember, the students of LaSalle College of the Arts and the students of SOTA, who have contributed so much to these stories and to us at the Jane Goodall Institute, are wonderful students, and you know, all of you can get involved too. If you have any pictures or any stories or videos or anything you want to tell us, you can send it over to us. You can ask your mommy and daddy to find us on social media or to go on our website or to send us an email with any comments that you might have. Please send us your pictures or your videos or any stories that you might want to share. And mummies and daddies, if you like, you can also join us as a volunteer. You could be a storyteller like me, Safari Sid. You could be like Connell or Tanya, who work really hard behind the scenes and bringing all of these stories to life. You could be one of the many, many other volunteers that we have at the Jane Goodall Institute. From doing monkey walks and monkey talks, to monkey guarding training, and so many other points that you could join us on. We'd love to have you as a part of the Jane Goodall Institute here in Singapore. Now it's not over yet, kids. We have one last story coming up, and you're in for a treat because the story is going to be told to you by Dr. Jane Goodall herself. Enjoy the story. Hello, um, here's Jane Goodall again. And uh, this time I'm going to read from this lovely book that I did with Michael Neugebauer, Jane Goodall, With Love. And a wonderful illustrator called Alan Marks, who's a great friend. And the inside cover is really splendid. It was great fun writing this book. And I want to tell you at the start that um, every single story in here is a real story. It's absolutely true, every single one. And there are 10 of them, and it was really fun to write. So the introduction. In 1960, almost nothing was known about the way chimpanzees live in the wild. That was when I went to Gombe National Park in Tanzania to see what I could find out. Every morning I climbed up into the forested mountains before it was light and stayed up there until dusk. The chimpanzees were terrified of the peculiar white ape who'd suddenly appeared in their world. And for months I could watch them only at a distance through binoculars. If I tried to get too close, they fled. Gradually, though, some of them began to lose their fear. One evening when I got back to camp, Dominic, my Tanzanian cook, told me that a large male chimpanzee had arrived that morning to feast on the ripe fruits of an oil nut palm growing by my tent. When he left, he had snatched some bananas from my table. For the next five days, the same chimpanzee returned. Each time he took the bananas, I'd asked Dominic to leave out for him. And so I decided to wait in camp to see this chimpanzee for myself. As I had guessed, it was the handsome individual whom I had already named David Greybeard. Each chimpanzee is as easy to recognize as a human friend, and each has his or her own distinct personality. David Greybeard was gentle and calm. I shall never forget 
the first time he dared to take a banana from my hand, a fully grown wild chimpanzee who'd grown up fearing humans, trusted me enough to accept food from my hand. I knew I must never let that trust be betrayed. It was David Greybeard who helped me to open the door into the magic world of the wild chimpanzees, for his companions observed his lack of fear and thus accepted me far more quickly than they would otherwise have done. David and the others have taught me much. Chimpanzees can, like humans, be very aggressive, even brutal at times, but they can be so gentle, affectionate and caring towards each other too. It's not only we humans who are capable of love, compassion and altruism, and the stories recounted here, based on my experience with chimpanzees over a period of almost 40 years, demonstrate their capacity for love. And let me just show you a photograph of David Greybeard, who really helped me to get to know the chimpanzees much more quickly than otherwise I would have. This story is one of my very favorite, Mel and Spindle. When Mel was just over three years old, his mother died during an epidemic of probably pneumonia that claimed the lives of seven other chimpanzees as well. In the wild, orphans are typically adopted and cared for by their elder sisters or brothers. But little Mel was alone in the world. And anyway, like all three-year-olds, he was still drinking a good deal of milk. We all thought he would die. It wasn't even as though he was a robust infant. He was sickly and looked frail. For the first couple of weeks, Mel was a pathetic little thing. He followed different chimpanzees, begging food from them, occasionally riding on their backs. They were for the most part tolerant of him, but he had no special friend, no individual on whom he could rely absolutely for comfort and protection. And then the miracle happened. Mel was adopted by Spindle, a 12-year-old adolescent male. The Spindle was not closely related to Mel. Indeed, he'd never even spent much time with the infant before. Yet now he waited for the orphan during travel, he allowed him to ride on his back, or even if it was raining, or if Mel was frightened, he allowed him to cling to his belly. Spindle always let the infant creep into his nest at night, and in response to Mel's begging gestures, often shared his food. And Spindle would run to defend or rescue his small charge if the need arose. Why did Spindle adopt Mel? We shall never know for sure. Was it perhaps in some way connected with the fact that Spindle's mother, ancient Sprout, died at the same time as Mel's? Of course a 12-year-old male doesn't spend all that much time with his mother. He's off with the adult males, learning about hunting and protecting the territory and about females. But even so, if his mother is still alive, he often returns to her for a while if the going gets tough. In her familiar presence, he finds reassurance and comfort. Is it possible that Sprout's death left an empty space in Spindle's heart? A space that was, to some extent, filled by his close contact with the small dependent infant. Whatever the reason, Spindle saved Mel's life. amazing treat. Wasn't it great to hear Dr. Jane Goodall telling us one of her stories? And did you notice at how great a storyteller she is, kids? So she taught us not just about conservation, but she teaches us how storytelling is an important way for us to be able to learn and for us to be able to teach each other. If we can put it into a story, it's going to be very easy for people to understand. So I hope you understood the story that Dr. Jane Goodall just told us. 
Now, kids, as I mentioned before, we would love to hear some of your very own stories. So maybe you can write us a story, or you can send us a video, or take some pictures, or do a drawing for us. Please do send it to us. Your mummies and daddies will be able to find our information on the website or over social media. And coming back to mummies and daddies, as mentioned before as well, we would love to have you on board the Jane Goodall Institute here in Singapore. We need volunteers in so many different areas, and I'm sure any of your skills would be put to good use for a good cause. On top of that, we are a charitable organization, so we do accept donations, and it helps towards not just conservation, but to keep the Institute running. We also do corporate events and sponsorships, so if you have a business, or if you work for an organization that wants some monkey talks done, or storytelling done, or if you'd like us to take you for a walk through one of the wonderful nature parks here in Singapore, we could do this, and it's a way that we can gain some corporate sponsorship as well. So thank you very, very much. Now, kids, I'm afraid it brings us to the end of this month's storytelling session. Did you enjoy all our stories? Wasn't the Sal College of the Arts students and the SOTA students brilliant? We really enjoyed it, and of course, the story from Dr. Jane herself. Now again, thank you all very, very much, and from everyone here at the Jane Goodall Institute, we hope you enjoyed it. We've had a wonderful time here at the Festival of Biodiversity, but you'll see us again next month for another story. I'm Safari Sid, and I'll see you next time. Bye.